Mike Rounds. He sits on both the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and the Senate Armed Services Committee, obviously uh, briefed constantly on the situation. And, Senator, I really appreciate your time. So let me just start with the latest that we know. As many as 8,500 U.S. troops have been put on alert to deploy. Do you support moving those U.S. troops to Eastern Europe right now? It will depend on whether or not NATO requests them. If NATO requests them, then we have an obligation to respond, and we should do so appropriately and timely. That's what the president has done in this case. He has notified uh, the different units so that they can tell the families. And, uh, you know, when you're talking about deploying in five days or less, it takes time to do that. So taking the right steps, sending a message also to Mr. Putin that we are very serious about our NATO obligations and that this will not simply be a bloodless, uh, straightforward program in which everybody looks the other way, similar to Crimea. So, you know, you use the word bloodless, and I just want to ask you about this, because obviously, as we've pointed out, these troops, um, you know, if they go, they're going to Eastern Europe, not technically to Ukraine, right? And, and the President Biden has made it clear he doesn't want to put American combat troops in Ukraine. Uh, very clearly, uh, he uh, has said uh, that's not on the table. They never were on the table, referring to troops. In that context, do you think Vladimir Putin takes these troop deployments from the U.S. seriously at all? Part of what Mr. Putin wants to do is to separate out and make it more difficult for NATO members to stick together. The fact that the president has said that he will support our NATO obligations is critical. And you're correct. None of these folks right now have even been deployed, and they're not planned on going to Ukraine. Ukraine is not a member of NATO. But it is to the other Baltic states, and this is where they have real concerns about Russian aggression. And it sends support to them, saying that, look, we've got your back. With regard to Ukraine itself, it would be a lot better if Mr. Putin clearly understands that he will have a cost if he does decide to invade. And the best way to get that across is to have sanctions and to have the understanding of the cost to him and to Russia if they do decide to invade. It's a lot easier not to invade than to be forced to pull back out. And yeah. let's be honest, I think Russian mothers value their children just as much as American mothers do. And I don't think they want to see Mr. Putin get them into a war in which their children could be at risk that are serving in their armed services. So right now, sending in defensive uh, uh, equipment, sending in as much as we possibly can, as quickly as we can, getting them trained and getting the folks set up in Ukraine to defend their own sovereignty. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the right thing to do. And I think that makes Mr. Putin reassess whether or not it's really worth it to actually invade or not. So, so, and I understand what the scenario you're laying out does not involve U.S. troops. It would involve, you know, U.S. weapons and support to Ukrainian troops. But would you support, Senator, U.S. troops fighting That's Russia correct. in any scenario over Ukraine? If we get to the point where we say we will never engage, then we find ourselves in a very bad negotiating position. Deterrence is the key. And if Mr. Putin is deterred by our firm stance with our NATO allies, then that'll make him think twice. If he gets to the point where he thinks all I've got to do is be a bully, all I've got to do is be aggressive, and America will always back down, then we will get into a fighting war at some point because he will push it until he does. What he has to understand is that he will never know the point at which we say enough is enough. But he's got to have that concern. The other part of this is he's got to understand very clearly that while we never want war, the best way to avoid war is to make very certain that your adversaries understand that you do have the equipment, you have the ability, you have the training, mm -hmm. and if you need to, you will stand up for what is right and you will fight. And that makes the bully back down. Sometimes a bully just needs to get a bloody nose.